Hi, I'm Norman Wildberger. Today we're going to have a look at affine geometry and barycentric coordinates. So the geometry that we're mostly concerned with is metric geometry, which includes Euclidean geometry and also non-Euclidean geometries and also relativistic geometries. It's a geometry in which there's a notion of measurement and the notion of measurement ultimately comes down to a notion of perpendicularity. If we strip away perpendicularity and leave the notion of parallel lines, we get what's called affine geometry, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. If we strip away the notion of parallel lines, but still maintain the notion of incidence between a point and a line, we have projective geometry, which we've been talking about in the last few videos. There are also two further stages that one go by dropping the notion of straight, and then we can go even further and dropping even the notion of a circle and just talk about arbitrary curves, and that's algebraic geometry. So as we go down in this list, the subject becomes sort of flabbier and more general and abstract. So let's talk about affine geometry today. That's a geometry where all we have is a straight edge in the plane and a notion of parallel lines. So we don't no, no longer have the notion of perpendicularity, but only notion of parallel. So let's start by working in that framework and seeing if we can create a ruler. So a ruler starts with a straight line here and two marked points, which we're going to call the unit. And we would like to extend this to make a ruler. And all that we have is a straight edge and a notion of parallel. So how do we do it? Well, we start by drawing a line that's parallel to the one that we already have. Let's say that one there. And then we draw some other line through one of our points and our other line. Now, because we have a notion of parallel, we can also draw a line that's parallel to the one we've just drawn through the other marked point. There. That gives us a new point of intersection there. And now what we can do is we can join this point here with that one there. It's another straight line. And parallel to that one, we can draw a line through this point right here. And what we see that we've done is we've created now a third point on our original line, which is going to be the same proportion this to this. That's good, but that's not exactly all that's required when we make a ruler. Suppose, for example, that we wanted to divide this segment into finer partition, let's say into four equal pieces. Well, what we would do then is we could draw another line, say that one there, and on that line we could mark four equally spaced points, just as we've done previous. So one, two, three, four, let's say. And then with those four equally spaced points and our notion of parallel, we can join this one to this one. And then to this, we draw parallels. So there's a parallel. There's a parallel. And there's a parallel. So we've divided this thing up into four equal segments. So there are some other important constructions that we can make just using the notion of parallel. We can find the midpoint of a segment by going any step from A and then drawing that line and then that parallel line and then parallel to this one, another line there. So we extend this to get a parallelogram and then the other diagonal gives us the midpoint which we call one half A plus one half B. A generalization of that is when we do want to divide a segment AB into a ratio, a specified ratio. For example, suppose we want to find the point C so that this to this is in the ratio 3 to 2. What we do is we draw any line through A and draw a ruler making steps, equal steps coming out like this. We make a parallel line through B and also the same equal steps through B. Now it's important to observe that we can do that. So we can create this little segment here and we can essentially translate it over here by use of parallel lines. So if we draw a line from a, this point to B 
then a parallel line will go from here to here. That means it allows us to transfer that unit to that unit on the same notion of parallel line. Okay. So these steps are all equal, and these steps are all equal. And now we go three up here, and two down here, and join those with a line. And we use the following notation. We say that C is equal to two-fifths of A plus three-fifths of B. The two-fifths and three-fifths are coming from these numbers, two and three, and the total five. And that guarantees that this number plus this number always equals one. That's a convex combination that ensures that we're talking about a point on the line AB. Now, Archimedes, the most famous mathematician of antiquity, and perhaps the most famous mathematician of all time, discovered the following fact, that if you have a lever or a balance, balanced at this point C, and we know this to this is in the ratio 2 to 3, then we can create an actual balanced situation by stacking three masses here and two masses here. Because this is a little bit closer, we need to stack more masses. This one's further apart, so we need to stack fewer masses here. And what's happening here is that a moment of these weights on both sides are equal. And the moment is, by definition, the mass times the displacement. So the moment on this side would be the mass of 3 times displacement of 2, while the moment on this side would be mass of 2 times displacement of 3. And since they're equal, those two things balance. That's a physical interpretation of what this point intermediate between A and C in this ratio means, or how you could get it. The idea of barycentric coordinates goes back to Mobius in the early part of the 19th century. Here's a triangle ABC. And on this side, we have the midpoint, so that's in the ratio of 1 to 1. And on this side, we have a point that splits it in the ratio of 3 to 2. And we've drawn that line. And we've drawn that line to get an intersection point G. And then I've also drawn the third line through G, meeting at some point E. Now, in terms of our previous notation, the point F is the midpoint of A and B. So we would write F equals 1 half A plus 1 half B. And D, we saw, was given by 2 fifths of B plus 3 fifths of C by that combination there. Now, the point G can be thought of as the point of balance of this triangle if we put appropriate weights on the sides. And the idea is that if this is going to be a point of balance, then this is a line of balance. So we imagine this triangle as being horizontal with weights on the vertices, and otherwise it's weightless. And if this is going to be a line of balance, this mass is right on the line of balance, it means that this moment and this moment have to be equal, so these two masses must be the same. And if this is also going to be a line of balance, then according to on this side here, we have, must have this moment equals this moment. So the masses here must be in the ratio 2 to 3. So we can make all of that work out by putting three masses here, two masses here, and two masses here. That will ensure that this is a line of balance and that this is also a line of balance. So we have the three masses, 2, 2, and 3, and the total mass of 7. So what we do is we write G equals 2 sevenths of A plus 2 sevenths of B plus 3 sevenths of C. Now this is a lovely way of thinking because arithmetically we can manipulate this to get a lot of interesting relations. For example, we can rewrite this as 2 sevenths A plus pull off the 5 sevenths here, and then what's left is 2 fifths B plus 3 fifths C. So we're seeing that the point G is 2 sevenths A plus 5 sevenths D. What does that mean? It means that as far as the balance along here goes, we're thinking of having 5 masses total at D and 2 masses there. And so since that's a point of balance, that must be in the ratio 2 to 5. I'll leave it to you as an exercise now in this triangle to also determine the ratio of this to this, and the ratio of this to this, and the ratio of this to this. And there's an intimate connection between vector geometry and affine geometry. In fact, they're almost pretty well the same thing. We're going to talk about that in our next video. I hope you'll join me. 
I'm Nolan Wahlberger. Thanks for listening.